busy, and Fourth of July was one of the busiest nights. We saw things like um, um, lost dogs. People find dogs. Um, they lost their dogs. They're looking for them, or they've gone through a plate glass window, or they they you know jumped the fence and got stuck. Um, things like that. So. So, so one of the biggest things that we see are the dogs that are lost and people find them and they can't locate the owner. And if you have a dog that, whether you're scared of thunder, lightning, or whether they're su super complacent and they're always with you, I can't tell you how important a microchip is. Um, it's, I've seen it save so many dogs and so many owners from heartache. Um, it, it, your veterinarian can do it. Anybody can. Any clinic can do it that has a doctor in it. It's um, relatively between $35 and $45. Um, it's, it's very uh, important. Um, and the reason why is I'm, I can give you an example of one dog that ran away. The, the painter left the door open and it ran away. Uh, it happened to be a neighbor of mine. And three days later... I looked over the fence at the clinic and there's a dog over there. And I said, I think that's rusty. And Dr. Block told me you're crazy. Um, so every time you guys send a message, I, it comes down on my screen and I can't see, but <laughs> um, Dr. Block told me I was crazy because it's a yellow lab and all yellow labs look alike. So I said, I guarantee you that's my dog. And it was my, one of my puppies that I had given them and I microchipped it before I gave it to him. And I went over and got it. We brought it to the clinic and I said, my puppy had a microchip and I scanned it and sure enough, it was rusty. And that was about seven miles away from, um, away from where the house was on over by the falls and, and the hot, and the, he ended up on sunset and 99th Avenue. So it, it's just, that's just one of the hundred stories I have that are microchips. So, it's really important to have one. Um, if you're driving your car and you get in an accident, the dog gets out and goes, runs away. It's, that's another reason to have one. Cause you're, you know, they may take you to the hospital and you're, you have the dog. It sounds gloom and doom, but it's not. So it's, I can't tell you how important it is. So, um, also check your surroundings. Like, um, Frankie was saying, check the fence, check the yard, make sure that everything's locked up and, do a perimeter check to make sure that there's no holes they can get out of. Cause if they want to get out, they're going to go and they're going to find somewhere to go when, when they get scared. Uh, especially if you have friends over neighbors over and someone, you know, someone goes in the backyard and leaves the gate open or something, How, you know, make sure it's locked and secure. Um, and then create a safe space for your pet um, that we'll get to in a little, a little bit later on. Um, do sometimes dogs like crates. Sometimes they don't, but, you can't just go, you know, get a crate. This is, this is a long-term thing that you'd have to acclimate them to a crate, but um, we can talk about that too later on. And then um, make sure they have an ID on also um, and make sure the collars are, are on uh, so that they're safe and on secure. So if they do get out, they can't get it out. They can't get out of it. Um, you can move to the next one. Thank you. So the, yeah, the microchip is easy. It's just, you make an appointment at the clinic, you go, they put it in right away and, and you're out. It's not a surgery. It's, it's considered a surgical procedure because you're implanting something, but it takes less than 15 minutes to do it and do the paperwork. And then you, um, yeah, perfect. You, um, you would go to the, um, to the website, register your chip, make sure that they have all your information. And then, and then every year you want to update it if anything changes. Um, if you don't remember your microchip, you can go to this microchip lookup. That's an AHA. Um, the Anim American Animal Hospital Association has an actual website that you can type in your chip number, and it can actually look it up and tell you, and tell the person who found the dog who's registered to that dog. Um, if you don't register and you have it put in at a clinic, all, all the information is going to come back to the clinic or a pet store. If they tell you the chip is in there, if you buy actually buy a pet, if the chip is already in there and they tell you that you still have to call and get it registered or it's going to come back to the pet store and the pet stores are not required to keep a record of who they sold the dog to. So now they can actually take that dog back and resell it 
and never call you. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Just update your information. Um, so there's a noise desensitization. So this is what we were talking about before that was really hard to say. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how many of you have tried this or even seen it or know that it exists, but it's an amazing way to, to get your dog so that it's not frightened of the thunderstorm and the, um, and the fireworks. It sometimes works. It sometimes doesn't, but it can make things better. Um, I think maybe Mia was talking about how when she gets the thunder shirt out, it freaks the dog out because she knows the thunder's coming and that makes sense. So what you need to do is, put that thunder shirt on when there's no storm coming, when there's no fireworks and give them cookies and give her treats when she puts it on and she's good about it and then take it off an hour later so that she doesn't associate it with the storms. She kind of associates it with something good and something pleasant. Um, and then the, there's a video that we can, we can share with everybody in the chat and, it's a six minute video that we were talking about before. And the guy actually sits there and he teaches you what to do about positive reinforcement. And in another room, he plays the thunder and lightning and he has a piece of roast beef in his hand. And, um, and he tells the dog, gives the dog roast beef and makes him sit and give him his paw. And then in the other room, he tells Alexa to play thunder. And so it comes on really low. And, he, and the dog's ears go back. You can see him go back, and he's ready to freak. And he starts giving him some, some gentle talk and some more treats and, and give me your paw and shake. And then a few minutes later, he turns the thunder up um, or the fireworks, you know, whichever, um, or your dad screaming about the football game, whichever. Um, he kind of turns it up a little bit at a time. And he does this over a period of not just once or twice, but over, you know, days or weeks that, that whenever you want to give the dog a treat, um, do that exact thing whenever you're ready to give him a treat or praise him for something or teach him a new trick and then, um, and then play the clips a few times but start really low and go up. Um, it, it, if you watch the video, you'll, you'll um, I don't know if we can play it, but, uh, or did you want to play it? Let's see if we can hear it. My buddy Quest we'll here is going to help us we'll demonstrate how we can use calm conditioning to uh, create a positive association with, with the sound of fireworks. Now, I'm using the Tricky Trainer Chicken Liver. These are soft treats. The important thing is your dog has to really, really like these treats. And so if your dog's not interested in them, but you think they're really good treats, it doesn't matter. If your dog has to be, find them irresistible. All right, so what I'm doing with these, these are meat-based, and so I can squish it. And so what I do is I squish it like a pancake and then I let him nibble on it. Now I mentioned this uh, uh, because you want to give your dog some experience nibbling on them first. So they're used to you having put in the whole treat in their mouth. Now if you have a dog with a hard mouth, you might have to search how to train my dog to have a soft mouth so they don't bite your fingers off when you're doing this, but I assume that your dog doesn't have that problem. All right, so I've got um, a recording of fireworks that we're going to start playing here in a second. And the key for counter conditioning is you want to be delivering the, the positive reinforcer, in this case, the treat, before the sound starts. Now, some, these are little training treats. As you can see, they're pretty small. You can get about three or four bites out of them, which works pretty well. Sometimes for this sort of technique, because we're going to do this for like two minutes, I find going and getting a big piece of roast beef cut by your deli, but getting cut about a third of an inch thick and then doing slices of it. So you have kind of a strip that you can kind of do as a push up and then your dog is continually chewing on it. I'm just going to move really fast with these training treats. Either one works, just find the technique that's good for you. All right, uh, our Sam is going to back up a little bit, give us a little bit more perspective. Are you ready, Adam? Yep. Okay, so we're delivering the treat. Go ahead. So you see his ears move, he heard that. And we're playing the sound of fireworks, but it's just so small that, and so low volume that he's, although you can see his ears are shifting around, he is aware of them. He's not, into, he's not freaking out and running away. If your dog freaks out or stops taking the treat or looks away, then it's too loud. So either move yourself further away from the speaker or turn the volume of it down. Now, this is a fireworks where it's got like some, some all right, guys, so that's just a taste, and we can go over it more after if you guys have more questions, but, but you saw how low that was.
and uh, the treat, you know, how they were giving the treats and stuff. So we're going to go on to other tips, but I know I, I feel like a couple of you would really benefit from starting this now. All right. I'm going to ha it over, hand it over to you, Lori. Okay. I mean, the, so the, the way he does it is, you know, it's going to take a couple days, if not weeks to do it. But um, if you start now, there's a good chance that they'll associate those noises with something good and the thunder shirt as well. Maybe um, have them associate it with something positive rather than that there's a storm coming or there's fireworks coming. Um, the cray training is, I think we'll probably go through this at another time because the crate chaining takes a while and if your dog's not acclimated to a, living in a crate or is comfortable in a crate then this isn't something you want to start right away um, it's also a personal preference that if you don't crate your dog because you don't believe in it then it's kind of like not it's a mood point you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to try it if, if it's not going to be something continual um, if you want to try to get into it you can leave one out and and just kind of let it, just let it be there for a bed. And if they go in it, great. If they don't, just don't ever shut the door. Um, but if anyone's interested in hearing about that, we can talk about that um, at a later time, or we can help you with something maybe on uh, off in another room while we're doing the the yappy hours. Um, the um, oh, the calming options are also a positive association. So if you if you have uh, things that they're really happy with their toys or something that they absolutely love. As soon as those things start happening, the thunder, the, the storms, you know, keep your voice calm and be calm and then, and then give them a treat, give them uh, some positive reinforcement, give them a Kong to play with that has peanut butter inside of it that they have to dig for. Um, I don't know if you watched that guy, but as soon as the thunderstorm the, th the fireworks started going off and the dog turned his head, he immediately diverted his back to the piece of roast beef or whatever he was giving him. So that's kind of important to do. Um, and the, uh, another thing we were talking about the music. Um, so I guess there are studies that say that raggy jazz and, and classical music are the dog's favorite. I don't know how they figured that out. I think it's great that they did. Um, but uh, I always thought it was rock and roll because it mimicked thunder and and fireworks. So I always played that loud. It doesn't work. But maybe the reggae and jazz will. I'm not sure. But that's more like maybe for separation anxiety and things like that. And I know they play that a lot on, on TV um, when they have like a dog channel. Um, and then there's also, of course, there's there's drugs. There's holistic, some holistic drugs. Uh, <clears throat> I think you would call it more like a homeopathic. Um, <laughs> um, if you move on to the next slide, you can see the Zelkine. Um, that's kind of something that we talked about with uh, separation anxiety, but they use it for a lot of different things. Um, and it's kind of, um, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's a milk product from bovine. I believe, and so I think there is, uh, uh, what is that stuff that's in Turkey that I always forget? The tryptophan. Tryptophan. <laughs> I, I believe that it's got some tryptophan in it and um, a, a, a couple other things that are in it that, uh, this one, I think we were going to check and see if you could buy this over the counter, but yeah, you can you just can. like you can buy the rescue remedy over the counter and some vets will also give you calming chews over the counter. Okay. So. Um, oh, yeah, um, so, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Well, after this, can you talk about how thunder shirts work like scientifically? Um, Cause a oh. lot of people they're like, Oh, I want, you know, maybe it's just whatever, but I know you did your research on yes, that. So oh, I thought that was kind of neat. I did, I did forget to tell you that. So the theory on thunder shirts that my understanding is that, so if a person has an anxiety or panic attack or some type of, of um, uh, uh, fight or flight, even in humans, they, the blood rushes all to their heart and it fills their heart up and then their heart can't pump it fast enough back to their extremities and back to their brain so that they can calm themselves down. It's all in their heart and it's pumping and pumping and then they can't slow the heartbeat down, um, just like the dogs, and then they start shaking. The thunder shirt puts pressure evenly on the chest so that it's pushing the blood. It's helping the heart slow down. So it's pushing on it. 
It's helping the, the blood disperse back into the extremities so that the dog can calm down and the blood can get to the brain so that the dog can think better. Um, I find that a lot, I hear about 50-50 from different clients who say it works great and some people say it didn't do anything. So it's all about the dog and it's all, um, it's all about how, sorry about that. Um, it's about the way the dog's gonna respond to it. It's not, it's something that works, it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. Um, but it's about, it's not about how you put it on or put it on wrong. It's basically, it's, and it, you got to put it on right and you got to put it on tight. But, um, but sometimes it works. It's, it's been pretty successful. And they have, if you look on their website, they have pretty good stories on uh, good success stories. Um, if you have any questions more about it, then j just r hang on to those questions and ask us at the end because there's some things I'm probably forgetting to tell you about. Um, then if we, so if you have a really serious problem where the dog, you think it's going to damage the dog or it's going to have just a heart attack and it's really, really high strung, um, then there's other drugs that you can talk to your veterinarian about. Um, we've listed a couple here, the Trazodone. I'm sure you know what Valium and Xanax are. Um, most people have tried it on their animals. The thing is that you have to know when it's going to happen and thunderstorms are a little touchy with that because by the time the drug starts working, the storm is usually passed. Um, so it doesn't, the fireworks, it, it will work on, um, but the thunderstorms, unless it's a big storm coming or the hurricane is coming, then you could, you could use those because you know when it's going to come. They only last about four hours. So, um, so you got to know when to take it when, um, yeah, it takes about an hour to kick in it, so ace promazine takes about an hour to kick in. I think the other ones take about 30 minutes, but, um, but there are, you got to talk to your vet about that and see what they recommend. Different vets recommend different things. Um, so in my house, we have rules. The rules are that when friends come over, um, this is moving away from thunder and fireworks and more into things that can happen on the 4th of July barbecues uh, when friends come over and then there's loud noise and, and the dogs are already freaked out enough. And then, um, and that, and everyone's barbecuing and eating. And, uh, so your friends, um, of course they're going to have fun, but they also, you don't give your friends, dogs, food, bones, pork, anything, uh, especially alcohol and think it's funny. Um, don't leave your drinks on the floor because my dog would go over and drink it. Um, and, um, and don't give anything off your plate or table food. Um, don't leave the plates on the floor. Don't leave the plates near the edge of the table. Always have a big container that you can, that you can, th people can throw stuff in, um, as far as garbage goes. Um, and then let's see. So I went the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, so Frankie, Frankie likes this slide. So make sure you're not getting into, make sure they're not getting into any foods. Um, if you're grilling from the home, um, even the drip pan. So if you have a drip pan under your grill, uh, guess who's going to eat the drippings? Um, uh, make sure they're in a cabinet or something covered. Um, if it's dripping on the floor or the ground, they're going to eat the dirt, um, they will eat the dirt. They will eat the rocks if it's gravel or pebbles or anything like that. Um, and it's hot. So you have to be careful about that too. Um, make time to give them long walks out in the sun and get them exercise. So they get tired at night. Yeah, that might work. Um, I'm not sure if it'll work for all dogs, but um, you'd think they would be tired at a barbecue running around with all your friends and that, but sometimes that gets them even more excited and, um, and the sun, you have to be careful with the sun um, and the heat because we all know the signs of overheating with the, with the excessive panting and the tongue hanging out to the floor. And, um, and then their, their temperature goes up, get them back inside. And, um, so I mean, some of the things that we've seen, these are actual, these are actual x-rays of, of people left a plastic fork or even a metal fork on the floor, on the table, the dog eats it because the dog's just not smart. It's probably a Labrador. Um, that's my favorite dog, so <laughs> I can say that. 
Um, but they, but he actually swallowed the fork. This other, it had a piece of meat on the end, so it didn't poke his, perforate his esophagus, but, but he swallowed it thinking it was part of the, part of the, um, part of the meat. <laughs> also, those are pebbles in the second, in the second x-ray. Those are pebbles from being under the grill and they tasted so delicious that the dog thought they, rocks tasted good. And, and he gets in that behavior, he'd probably do it again. So just to be really careful. The things aren't, you're not going to think about. Um, and then there's always the bones. Don't leave the bones out. The, oh, he's not going to eat it. It's cute to watch him, but that dog just ate the whole bone, right? Just, I think that was a whole chicken carcass, but. <laughs> um, so what we were talking about, um, just to make things safe and um, to close, you know, keep, I don't know, I just got totally tongue twisted. <laughs> Sorry. I hope everyone's laughing at me because I can't hear anyone. But, um, so make we think sure you're you awesome. Have... No worries. You're doing great. No worries. And now Thank you're you. frozen. <laughs> um, so make sure that you give them plenty of exercise. And uh, when you do exercise them and run them, keep them on a leash, especially on the 4th of July um, and, and make no, make the fireworks noise, you know, a, a treat party. Um, try to desensitize them, you know, start now, start tonight, start tomorrow, um, get that thunder shirt out, put it on them a couple, you know, a couple times this week. And so when there's nothing coming and then give them treats to, to make sure that they, um, to make sure that they realize that they're safe and it's not always a bad thing that you put that on them. Um, and then somebody mentioned that the dog goes in the bathroom. That's great. Um, it, let them go in the bathroom. It's a perfect place for them. They feel safe. Um, if you can put some music on in there, um, that's a great idea uh, so that they don't hear it so much so that they're not so panicked. You can also try the Thunder shirt and the bathroom. Um, that's a good idea. And, and give him some treats when he's ready to go in the bathroom so he thinks that that's a pleasant uh, experience for him to go in there. Um, okay. Oh, where are we? There you go. Check check your yard. Make sure you do a walkthrough and um, make sure you check, you know, check the sidewalk when you're going for a walk. And um, and then if you do have friends over, make sure they know the rules. And, and you know, you can use it by tell them, you know, you're welcome to bring your dog, but just don't let them get anything um, and don't leave anything out. I We actually, that's probably the second most common thing that comes in after after fireworks or or, or thunderstorms is uh, Monday morning the Monday morning blues uh, the dog doesn't feel good the dog's kind of puny um, and he has diarrhea and he's vomiting so I always ask them so it, did he get into anything no we didn't get into anything we didn't give him anything different he's got the same food he's always had so then I start talking to them and I get a little more friendly and I because that's what we're supposed to do anyways. Um, as a technician, you want to connect with people so that they, they feel comfortable talking to you about whatever it is. Um, and then I still, I always ask, so what did you do over the weekend? And, oh, we had a party and we had a barbecue. Yeah, we had pork and we co cooked a big pork. And, and, then, and then I know what to tell the doctor when I go in. I said they had a party. They had pork, fries, corn. So now we know, like, what to check for. Um, and and they're all, all their friends were over and they think it's cute when the dog gets a, oh it might have got a little bit so now he's got pancreatitis and he's going in the hospital so your friends just cost you a thousand dollars for three days in the hospital so um that's the kind of thing we want to we want to help you avoid um so if you if you have any questions now's a great time to ask them and if you have any input also if you know something that can help that I haven't touched on that maybe someone else hasn't thought of, please feel free to tell us. We'd like to add it and, and try to help as many as people as we can. Um, and you can always reach out to us. Um, the website is up here. and I mean, the, uh, the email is up here also. And we have other resources that we can help you with um, during and after the, when we get back to normal and even now. So, um, and if you don't have a good veterinarian or you're new to the neighborhood, we also have resources that we can 
we can find out where you live and what you like and if you like eastern or western medicine or you like traditional or you like the mom and pop place or you're more corporate we have we can connect you with the with a clinic that maybe you can connect with the doctors better with so we're happy to help i'm talked out <laughs> thank you Lori. you're welcome I, I i really appreciate it yeah um some great info i wanted to see if anybody had any specific um situations that they wanted to talk about um to see if we could kind of brainstorm together um i know we discussed some of it at the beginning but it, feel free to jump in um and and ask questions i know a lot of it i mean as far as if there are more severe cases you're probably going to have to talk to the vet and i actually since i have my dog that's um he is on crate rest for a month he has had to take trazodone um for the past two weeks probably because the anxiety of you know it helps a lot it calms them down but it's just an example of like how medication can really help your pets you don't have to give it all the time but you can have it specifically for situations like fireworks and you know these busy things. Yeah. alex did you say that your dog was uh, has um has, has issues has issues with yeah, and I was actually going to ask you a question about the Thunder Shirt. So I know you mentioned ha putting it on them when there's no storm going on so that they can get used to it and, and know that it's something safe and comfortable to wear. Um, but then you mentioned that the science behind it is that it causes the heart rate and the heartbeat to slow down. So would there be any negatives of putting that on them when their heart rate's not going fast? That's a great question. So, so let's back up to that. Like if you're conditioning him to be happy about putting the shirt on and not thinking, oh, there's a storm coming, that might have been Maya. But put it on him and don't pull it tight. So what the, the theory is when you pull it tight, that puts the pressure on the, on, the, on the heart so that the blood disperses back into the body. So what you would do is just put it on and it's all Velcro. Um, at least the last time I saw them, they were Velcro. And so you just don't put it on tight. Yeah, just put it on loose and then give him a treat and make it a big yay, yay. And then, and then when you need it, he won't care. Um, he won't associate it with fireworks and, and thunder and something negative. Awesome. That was, that was a good question though, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, she has a thunder shirt. Um, and we, we had one before that we used kind of on and off and it was sort of like an off brand thunder shirt and we thought maybe we just didn't have like a good brand one. So we actually just bought like my, my mom just bought her one, um, like two weeks ago and she's been using it during, we've had a lot of thunderstorms lately and she's been using it and she says it does help, but she still shakes and cries, but it's better than before for sure. Oh, good, good, good. And it might, you know, over time it might help a little bit more. And if she puts it on maybe a little bit tighter, it'll, it'll also help. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, it's been, so I just want to add some training perspective to Thunder Shirts, crates, the noise training, all that. Um, I'm guilty of it as well, of doing something a few times and going, oh, okay, the dog knows this, and then really testing it. Let's say you're teaching a dog to stay, right? And you step away three feet, come back, yes, tree. And you move around and it's fine. And then we have a tendency to go into another room because it knows stay and the dog gets up and wanders around. The point here is that with undershirt, anything you're training, take it very slow so the dog wins at every stage. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does take time and it does take patience. And especially the younger the dog, the more puppy, um, you know, the world is a strange place for them. So as far as the thunder shirt goes, one of the things, and you do this with crates too, is you put the shirt on very loose, you make it a big party, you're playing, you're, you're giving treats, you're giving praise, and you take the shirt off. And you do that a lot, several times, just for a few minutes each time. And what happens is, aside from the physical effect of the shirt, the dog gets excited when you take the shirt out, excited in a positive way. Exactly. Because it begins to equate joy, fun, all the positive stuff, right? As opposed to, you know, buying the shirt off the shelf. There's a storm coming. It's hurricane season. I'm just going to throw the shirt. It's supposed to, you know, miraculously. Um, so there's, there's a couple of components to, 
just say the thunder shirt, right? There's the physical, and then there's the incremental joy buildup, right? So put it on, play for five minutes, take it off. Right? Yeah. Positive association. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We all want positive. Who, who's the one that said I'm that? I'm looking the for some of my own life. <laughs> Mitchell. Mitchell. I called him Michael before. He told me and I you, could. Though. Yeah, you call me whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> whose dog goes in the bathroom? Who was that? I think it was Mia's dog. Was it Mia's dog? Me. No, me, Irene. It was Irene and... Oh, yeah. Irene. <laughs> Like hiding behind the toilet. Yeah, my oh. Pomeranian is the one that always, when it starts raining a lot on the Thursday, he always goes to the bathroom. When the door is closed, he starts scratching that open the door, like, you know, and I have to open the door even at night time. I have to leave it like a little open so he can go inside. That's the way that he relaxes inside of the bathroom. Yeah, that's great. He found, he found his own niche. He found his way to do it. And that's great. That's great. As but the other good. ones, no. The, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Are um, they are the other uh -huh. ones? Get a uh, the other ones, the little one, the, the, she start like a, with a lot of anxiety, start walking like crazy in the house, and then she had like high fever. When you get her, she's so hot, like a, like a, the, I don't know, like a, she's had fever. <laughs> but I have to, even that I take her, I you know, try to to relax. Mm -mm, nothing until she doesn't hear any more the the thunderstorm. Oh, yeah. So their temperature goes up because the, her heart rate goes up, and it's like when you work out, your body, your muscles work, your heart beats faster, and then you get hot. Um, and that's probably the same thing that's happening to her. Um, I mean, she might benefit from a a thunder shirt if she'll, you know, if you can acclimate her to it. And, and then also some kind of positive reinforcement where you give her the treats and maybe watch that whole video so you can see how you, because they feed off each other also. So maybe try to get them both to where you give them treats and show some kind of positivity during the thunderstorms and see if, if you can't get her to calm down a little bit. Okay, perfect. I will do it. I want to try. I never have tried that uh, the, um, the thunderstorm, the, the thing that you talk about it. I'm going to try yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah, and we'd like to know, like, if you think it's working or even if it doesn't work, we'd like to know your feedback so that we know what to tell other people. Oh, um, yes, of course. That's important, too. Um, okay, I will. Yeah, Thank I'm, you. I have the question about her anticipating a storm with the thunder shirt, but I really appreciate you guys saying to introduce it to her. I think that would be much better if I made it a fun thing. You exactly. Know. I mean, that's so valuable. And also, as far as medications, I've given her doggy Xanax and Benadryl on a flight, and she has the opposite reaction. She just gets yeah. tired and... <laughs> I haven't tried trazodone, which I personally have, so maybe I could try a little bit of that. But um, it's yeah, it's it's uh, an adverse reaction. Make sure that you talk to your vet before you give trazodone, though. Um, I will. Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because the milligrams are much different for dogs. Oh no, I would be for us and and totally yeah. Me. And then sometimes there's an extra ingredient in our trazodone that's not in for the dogs, and it's not good for the dogs. So just make sure that you that you discuss that with them first and also the way it's metabolized. So if you have to check, you know, make sure that their kidneys are good and their liver is good. It's not going to compromise anything. Of course. And but then, you think, you know, have you heard of dogs just reacting to doggy? It, yes. I mean, she just, but, she goes crazy. I mean, yeah. So where did you get the, you're talking about doggy Xanax from the doctor. It's just, yeah. you're just calling it. So it's the same exact Xanax that we take. Yeah. Dogs, so our, what we would take to, say we had anxiety to take a flight and the doctor gave us Xanax, it would be a point, maybe a 0.2 milligram or maybe a 1.15. The dogs take five milligrams. 
for a for a fifty um, pound dog, they would take between two and five milligrams, not 0.2 and not 0.5, but five milligrams. Um, so their dose is much higher because their body metastasizes. It's so much different than we do or metabolizes, sorry, that um, it's completely different because their, their chemistry is just all different. So doggy Xanax isn't always the best thing. And Benadryl, it's just like children. They some children will go to sleep on Benadryl, and some will bounce off the ceiling. No, she um, bounced up the whole flight. It was just unbearable. Oh. But I did buy hemp calming aids from Petco. Uh huh. To her, it's a treat, which is great. Yeah. Oh, I, that's good. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I would like to know how that works. There's oh. also a uh, Bach. So, Lori, I have a question for you. Okay, well, uh, give me a minute, uh, Maya. The, um, the Bach Rescue Remedy is a is a liquid that we take, and um, I've seen that do. You put two or three drops under their tongue, and that st I don't know what is in that that works so well. It's some flowers and alcohol, but mm -hmm. it works amazing on the dogs. So that's another thing to think about trying. Um, Thank you. You're welcome, Mitchell. Where are you? Hi. I'm here. I just wanted to know if on the second to last slide was that a pot pipe that you had in the corner there? I, I don't I would I plead the fifth. Okay. Just, just <laughs> no, the second to last oh the green one? That's a dog partying. Yeah, that might be that might but that's Frankie's pipe, not mine. <laughs> Officer. <laughs> I, it's not mine. <laughs> oh wait, it's legal. They they have that legal stuff you you get. I also plead the fifth. <laughs> yeah, that's another, that's a whole nother PowerPoint. <laughs> and I'm actually going to jump in and say something about Bach flowers because they are phenomenal for humans. Like when anybody's oh, yeah. in a stressful situation, a little anxiety, put a couple of drops for yourself. The difference is that one of them, the pet one doesn't have alcohol to um, preserve it and the human one does. So... I, I went through an awful breakup years ago and no. I started dosing myself and, and it's essence, flower essences. So basically they put the flowers in distilled water, put it under the sun and the essence from the flower is what they use. And I took a class on this um, to create the Bach flower remedies. And there's, I don't remember how many there are. I think it was like 23 or something, but rescue remedy is a combination um, specifically for anxiety. And it is, I, I, I didn't even realize how quickly, for me at least, m my anxiety dropped that day when I started dosing myself. So if it, you know, that has it, oh, it's, it's it. worked it's for awesome. me too. It's I worked for it. me too. I love it. Yep. Exactly. And the, and the alcohol isn't a bad thing for the dog. It's uh, it's actually probably that li the the little amount that it is, and you're only putting a drop or two in it it's really not gonna, it's not a carrier. So if you only have that one, it's fine to give. You don't wanna give them repetitively the whole bottle and you turn your dog, he'll have to go to rehab. But the, but it, it does work and it, um, if you only have the one throughout with alcohol, just give it if you have to, cause I know it works, I know it works. I don't know how it works, but it does. Lori, can you touch on CBD a little bit? Because I know that was, um, we, we didn't put it up there for a reason because there's not a lot of, um, you said there's not a lot of research on that, right? But it, it seems yeah. to work for some. So the CBD, um, the, so what we find happens when the, when there's THC in it, okay, say in an emergency situation where someone comes in and their dog is when you when you go, move towards the dog, they freak out. They get really hypersensitive. They the light bothers them, and they start biting people that they actually love. Um, their eyes do this nystagmus, and and it, it's classic. And their temperature goes up. So most of the time, when you ask them, did the dog get into anything? Is there anything you could have got into? They say no, 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 no. So we usually send the youngest purple haired technician into the room and close the door and they go, Hey, we just need to know, did your dog get into any of your stash? And they usually will say, because we need to be able to treat it correctly. 
yes, they'll tell us. And then they'll tell us what it was. Well, we already know what it was, but so the effects that THC and CBD have on dogs is completely different than, than it works for us. Like it calms us down and whatever it does, it makes your eyes red and you get like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep or you just laugh all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what it does anymore. Cause I haven't done it in a while, but, um, but the dog, but, yeah, but that's a good program. I feel like a lot of the CBD doesn't have a high amount of it's they're very low doses of THC. So some there's like, I don't remember what vet it, his name is. Frankie, we meet we met him at several events, but he's a proponent for giving CBD. And but but apparently he's done research. So some some vets are for it and other vets are not because there's not like you said, a ton of research. But they are, you know, for yeah. And for us, for humans, when we get CBD, they, there's in California and in Colorado, I think there is allowed to be a certain amount of THC, but outside of the certain states, they're not allowed to. Without a, um, without a prescription, um, there is now in, yeah, it can be like point, point, I think less than 0.05 is legal in in Florida. And I actually went to an art show Flavia and I went to an art show and, and there was a man selling this stuff on the table and he, and it was, and I said, how are you allowed to sell that? And he said, because it doesn't have, doesn't, it only has a blah, blah, blah percent of, and I, you open it up, it smells just like pot and you, it's got sparkly on the outside and he's got a piece of paper that he gives you and it says officer, <laughs> this is legal and this is what's in it. And, and here's the chemical breakdown. So he, you have all that and it's legal, but if you give it to the dog, there's, there, there haven't been enough studies to publish any papers in the VIN or the AVMA. They're starting to, but there's not enough published to where a doctor will say, I'm going to give you this to, to try on the dog because so, I think it can treat this and this and this because there just isn't studies yet on it. So um, I mean, they may be doing it as we speak and maybe something's published now, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I have enough experience with seeing it work or not work or adverse results from it to say, yeah, I think you should try it. Um, yeah. So go people, forward with caution because everybody seems to be promoting it and they jumped on the bandwagon, you know, and there's so many businesses that popped up and, uh -huh. and what, what I found fascinating Lori, from what you just taught us is that like, it's, it's not regulated, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, no. When it's, when they're saying CBD, just uh -huh. CBD, it's not, it's, there's nothing regulated in it. And that, you know, you don't know, like you're giving your dog a, a gummy that has CBD in it, which is fine. But, um, but you don't know how much is in it. Like well, I, how, I, much does, how much does a dog need? Right. I would never give a, a human CBD to like a human gummy or something like that. I would only get like dog specific because that way it's like, mm -hmm. they have to have had some, somebody must have been, done some research in order to bring that product to the market because if not, they're going to be in big trouble. You know, I don't care. Or it's just it. marketing. I mean, sure. if it doesn't have, yeah. Um, so you had a vet, re Jason says that he had a vet recommend CBD to treat DM. It worked extremely well. It does need to be from a single source. You see so there's diabetes, diabetes, myelitis, DM. What's DM? He's typing right now. Oh. Well, he's typing. Did everybody see Mario's comment? Oh, oh my God. So good. Degenerative oh. myelopathy. It's hilarious. Yeah. He's, oh, he's, degenerative he's myelopathy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> degenerative myelopathy is um they they don't have a lot of um a lot of success with what to like how to treat it how how did the dog do with that jason sorry we can't talk the dog had a bunch of one night stands extremely well <laughs> Mitchell. Yeah, Jason had a good experience with it. If, if um, on the chat, he said it worked extremely well. Um, oh, that's awesome! Is that all you treated him with? Was the um, and steroids maybe? So I also had a doc that was that had uh, thyroid cancer. Uh huh. She was diagnosed when she was fifteen, and we decided to not do any treatment for her. 
Um, we put her on a special CBD that was recommended by a vet that like is specific for dogs. And they, um, you know, asked us a bunch of questions beforehand uh, about her weight, her size, her history, things like that. And they recommended this um, particular mm. brand. And they told us at the vet, like when she was diagnosed, she had like three to nine months and she ended up living 14 months afterwards. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I don't know if the CBD did, you know, anything, but. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's an anti-inflammatory. So, I mean, supposedly. So um, I know I'm a big fan of it because I used it for a pain in my foot that I had and my ankle broke my ankle and in some third world country, I mean, up and coming country and it hurt and it was so swollen and they were, they were putting this stuff on it and I was taking it and orally and it, it hurt for probably a year. I'm reading his thing. Um, and I know it worked. I, the pain is gone now. So I know it works. Um, those are good studies, Jason. You should um, somehow, who is your vet? Silver Bluff. Oliveira. Yeah? Uh, interesting. Oh, I want to talk to her. That's great. That's great news. And that's great news with the thyroid also. Um, I have a magazine around here somewhere. Um, I just don't know where it is, but I, I can... That, he's the veterinarian. I wanted to name, say silver, but I don't think it's silver, but she was the one who recommended, oh, she wasn't the one who recommended it. I mean, some vets are for it. Other vets just, they don't have enough information. So yeah, the ones that are, are, are not promoting are not against it. They just don't have the information. I right. was a vet in Connecticut. Okay. Interesting. That's great. What brand? Yeah. Connecticut's Connecticut's far ahead of us, you know, they're just smarter. <laughs> Does anyone have any more questions about their particular pets or any any anecdotes? Because I mean sometimes, you know, like like we said, like with the C B D in particular, it works for some, doesn't work for others, etc. You could go back over the noise desensitization YouTube clip if you like. What do you what would you guys like to do? I have a question. Okay. It's regarding the thunder shirt. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, the last time that we were here, uh, I learned about it, and I went to the internet to see if I could buy it. But uh, I was wondering if you had a local store that I can go actually with my doggy to buy it, because I don't know. I mean, if I order it, uh, the size stuff is, is difficult for me. He is very small. And the last time I ordered uh, a leash, it was um, a vest for him. It was too, too large. So I don't want to order the Thunder shirt. Do you know a local store that I can trust with a good product, the Thunder shirt? Yeah, it looks like they have it at PetSmart and at Petco. Oh, okay. um, so if you take and, your and pet, pet supermarket, I've seen them there. As a well. pet supermarket. Oh, so they do have it. Okay, there, you can try it on. Yeah. Okay. Pet, okay. pet supermarket first because they're a local company. Yeah. I like oh. oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I don't see it on the website, but uh, um, that doesn't mean it's not there. Uh, oh pet Smart, Chewy, Petco, Amazon, Undershirt, sure. Chewy. Probably. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll check. But you know out. what? Maybe we can. Maybe we can. Uh, I can reach out to that um, CBD guy, the <laughs> the veterinarian. Maybe he'll. Maybe he has a talk, or maybe he would be interested in talking to us. He would um, love to. Trust me, he's he would like to. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can reach out to him and see if maybe he maybe he's willing to do that. I don't know. I mean, yeah, he would. That'd be kind of neat. Yeah. Also ask um, uh, the the uh, fear free doctor. Um, I forgot his name now. Um, 
I can see his face. He's got the gray hair. Um, I can ask him if maybe he has uh, some thoughts on that also for for anxiety. Okay. No, he's the guy that um, cre actually created the Fear Free. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, um, not Andy Rourke. Well, in the meantime, I think Mario said that he's a Marty pretty classical music on because um, he's afraid <laughs> Beethoven's overture <laughs> yeah, will come on. never know. Yeah, Marty Becker, his name is, Marty Becker. Ah, Marty Becker. Yeah, yeah, maybe he ha has some thoughts on CBD also. Yeah, we can probably look on his website. He has tons mm -hmm. of information. Yeah. Um, and bone broth is another thing. Yeah, bone broth is amazing. I think there's a local woman that makes bone broth. Actually, Sadet gave me the information, right, Jason? Did you get that from Sadet? Yeah. So, bone to soup, exactly. And this is great oh. for all dogs. I mean, for humans. <laughs> it's good for humans. <laughs> it is. It's great for our, our everything. Oh, joint. wow. Yes. They have it at my for, for joint pain and things like that? Well, for, yeah. They use it for the degenerative myelopathy, but for in general, it's supposed to be amazing. There's, we can check it out. Um, bone to soup. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was giving it to my dogs for a while, too. And then I'm like, okay, switched over to feeding a different kind of food. So I wasn't feeding uh, as much kibble anymore, just a little sprinkle. But we make homemade food. That's another topic, food. Yeah, that's a hot topic. Yeah, that's, that's another one. Do you guys have any topics you want us to cover in future um, yappy hours? We actually are doing this every Wednesday. I did the same thing, Jason. I've, I made... I made Lilo all her food for the last yeah. year and a half. Yeah, I do the Woodwood Dog Food Company beef recipe with their, um, with their supplement. So that that's my dog is seventeen years old and she's still trucking around, man. She's dragging she's dragging her left leg now, wow. but simply because she's just getting <laughs> to that age where, you know, she, I think she she's also cool. has some neurological issues, but um. I changed their food about two years ago and it has, wow. The change is amazing. What did, what did, what did you change to? So I make a recipe from Winwood Dog Food Company that has uh, ground beef, potatoes, pumpkin, cauliflower. Um, you add fish oil and another oil that they wanted you to add and beef liver. And you, you cook this and I make like 20, Tom makes 20 pounds at a time. <laughs> And we add the supplement and I don't know. It's, I don't know if it, it has to be that because she is just so different. I feel like she's just different. You can feel she's that they're a little more spry, you know? Um, she, and she enjoys it. She loves it. Her cognitive function is way better than her body. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't know that she's that old. Exactly. She's she, a cool dog. She runs after anything and she's dragging herself she doesn't even realize it it's it's really it's really uh it's really good to see she's still you know there but it's hard to see them age yeah especially at 17 jason knows moby oh for, for quite some time yeah jason was with me with in dog rescue when uh when we met her the moby oh. <laughs> Back when she was a monster, <laughs> the Moby monster, she was feisty. That was that. She was a feisty girl. girl. Guys, I'd love to take a picture with you guys, um, with everybody's doggies. I... I'm going to bring Nutmeg into the screen. He's been eating his Kong with peanut butter, which he loves during fireworks. It's enough for him, luckily. Oh, look, Nettie. Your fans. <laughs> Charlie's old girl. In the air conditioning. Is Charlie um, Wiggle but not coming? No, he's, 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 he's inside camera. in the air he's conditioning. He's smart. Cur curled up in a ball. Romeo! Romeo, my Romeo! He's my, he's my baby, even though he's actually Jess's. I freaking oh. love this dog. Best dog ever. Where's Mario's munchkin? Yeah, or Scout. Scouty! Oh. Scout. Hey, Scout. Right. We're ready. Ready, Frankie? Get it all, out. all right, ready? 
One, two, three, cheese. <laughs> All right, cool. Right, you know, half your face is coming out, right? I don't Sorry, mind. I don't have a dog. Right. Romeo. Do you have kitties? No. Well. Oh, yes, but not a nice one. <laughs> this one here is Leo, super wild. A little feral kitty. He's going to have to go back to the to the to where he came from because he's not, I don't think he's tameable. Oh, baby. I mean, he talks and talks, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Can't talk. Ah, he pops up. He popped out of the kennel. I told you today. Oh. I was like, <laughs> I'm kitties. He's got three more days. Perfect. Would you like? I'm gonna. I think we should do another photo because half of us like we're like blurry. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. You don't now mind? You we can set uh, it up again. Your face. Yay, Jason's getting his baby in. Awesome. Okay, hold on. All right, ready? Yeah, we can kind of see. All right, I'm going to go one, two, three. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> I love Jess's pictures. That was cute. <laughs> well, if, I, if you have any questions, we will, we'll see if you have any topics that you want to discuss, anything that would help you. Um, and that way we can bring, you know, good information to you, uh, the next time and every time we meet, you know, we want to mm -hmm. be here, we want to be a resource to you all and, and help however we can. Um, we do have two upcoming topics, um, that Lori is going to cover in the next ones. Let me just give you guys a preview, um, because Lori has so much experience in this world. Um, the first one is titled, so your veterinarian gave you an at home pet treatment plan. And then the second one is going to be probably focused on diabetes, depending on, uh, we had a poll in one of our groups, um, diabetes or maybe even dental care. So, you know, just if you guys have any pressing issues, um, we're happy to, you know, research and create a, a presentation for you. Um, and Lori is just amazing. She has all those years of experience and, you know, we have, we have the pet care experience, but Lori's got the medical side. Yeah, and, and if you have a, if you get a estimate for something at your veterinarian that you don't understand, um, if it, you know, you think it's crazy too high, too low, too something, you can reach out to us and we can explain it to you so that you understand, because a lot of people say, that's astronomical. It's like, okay, let's talk about it. Let's, I can, I can help you understand it because there's a reason there that it's so high. It's not just because the doctor wants to make a buck and drive a Rolls Royce, because... I guarantee you that's not why they went into veterinary medicine was not for money. It wasn't. So Yeah, so, you yeah. recently did that for me for Nutmeg. I got a I got a quote for his teeth cleaning and I'm like, ah oh. <laughs> and she I shared with her the receipt and, and she went through every item and it was fantastic to, to know that, you know? Like I know my bed is amazing, but it's still like more than what I spend on my dental care. So it's always a shock, right? Um for our babies, especially little ones, you guys with your small dogs, brush those teeth, get those teeth cleanings every year. If February possible. is dental health month. Save your money now for dental health month because usually the vets will offer like 10% off of a dental cleaning or sometimes even more than that off a dental cleaning. So if you, if you, if you know it has to be done, then save up for February unless it's something urgent. But um, that's a good time to do it because they do specials. Hi, mom. She was behind you. Hey. <laughs> Hola. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Doing a great doing? Miss you today. Oh, and guys. Hi, <laughs> Town is Hi, under. Hi, How are you? How are you? <laughs> okay, there he is. Yeah, Just waiting for, for 40. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I checked in on town. I mean, you know, even to try to do social distancing walks later. It's too hot right now anyway, but um, they're not going to be open until August because they're they're doing renovations, which I'm really excited about. So does, be everyone, does everyone know what we used to do at town? Does everyone know? Everyone yeah. does? Okay. We used to do uh, yappy hours and also our pack walks. Our, we'd have brunch there with our pups uh, one Sunday a month. And then on one Wednesday month, actually, I think it's the third Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. It was amazing. It was fun. Did you ever consider having it further north? Because I've never gone to Yapier because it's so far south. I know. Brickle. We had one in Brickle. 
Is that that's still a little too far south for you, right, Mia? Um, I'm north. Where are you, Mia? Dania. Dania Beach. Dania Beach. Let's do one on the beach. Yeah. We actually I want to go say, to the beach oh, there's with our three pups. Dog parks on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Dania Pier too. Don't they have live music? Yeah. Nice. I'll I want to go. go paddleboard. Paddleboarding with the socialize my little dog. Would you all be into or interested in having like a beach meetup? Because we're thinking of doing that actually oh. when the beaches open up again. I'd make the trip. Yeah, Me awesome. Beaches are open in Broward. Yeah, um, I think they closed down Olita, which is why I said that. I and yeah. plus we have to wear masks in public now, so I think beach plus mask would be a little bit tough. But <laughs> I mean, we do it every day. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> with, yeah, we do that for our job. But. Um, <laughs> Or like I said, paddle boarding. We can see if they have an option for that. That'd be kind of nice. Or do a trail where we, you know. So yeah, know. we'll, we'll put it up on Meetup and also our Facebook pages. How about a dog beach? I mean, I had a bad experience at Hallover, but it's kind of central. Yeah, we were yeah. thinking one of them was going to, like, Hallover. The dog was attacked. But oh, no. if we were with other people, maybe it's okay. Oh, yeah. She's seven pounds and... You know. Oh, that's that's oh, my one issue with like mixed dog hard. beaches where they don't have like an area for small guys. Although even small guys can attack each other, but yeah, no, it's be tough. tough. I'm she's sorry. been mauled. She's been mauled uh, when she was little and bad experience. So yeah, that's I'm not good. Do that again. But avoid that. With the group, I'd feel safe. Okay. So we'll definitely put that up on our meetup and um, we're nearing the end of our time together. Actually, we're over time, but that's fine. That just means we enjoyed um, each other's oh. company. Thank you guys so much for your patience with our little technical difficulties earlier. And thank you for Lori for your awesome presentation. Um, we're always available to answer your questions, please, if you need our contact information. Um, we just we want to be a resource for you guys, you know? Yeah. Let us know. It's great to meet our new friends, and hopefully we'll see you guys again real soon. Thank you for doing this. It's so awesome that you told these, and um, I really enjoy them, and I love you all. Thank Aww. you, Mitchell. We miss you already, and thank you so much for coming on and, and giving your expertise as a yeah, senior. You, your input is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll still be joining, just not from my terrace in Brooklyn.